Well, hi again. We looked at what a document-based question is. We looked at the fact that you cite documents as evidence, and we talked about what a good document-based question essay looks like. So you'll again, we're going to have a quiz on this at the end, so I hope you were paying attention. Now, our purpose now is we're going to look at the document-based question that will be the project for this week. So we're not looking at World War One; we're looking at bubonic plague. Now, I'm going to scan it with you real quickly, and then I want to just read. There's a really general historical context. One of the things about document-based questions is they generally don't overload you with history, and they'll depend on your history and understanding to be more authentic, not based on a textbook, but based on – they want you to rely heavily on your understanding as based in the document. So they don't want to prejudice you too much. But the context is important. Now, there are nine documents in this document-based question. I think for some of you folks, we might eliminate a couple of them. But our purpose today right here is just to read, look at the introduction and just kind of quickly scan the documents so that when we come to Tuesday, on Tuesday, we'll do our document analysis and begin to prepare um, cases for ourselves here. Okay. Who needs bells? Okay, here we go. Um, just, there's the introduction. I'll read that in a minute. There is a map there, bubonic spreads through Europe. And a nice thing about having your iPad, you could blow this thing up if you'd like. You could see these, these represents plague-stricken towns and sites. These are uh, basically the progress of the plague. This line, for example, right here, represents how far the plague has gotten from the east on June 8, uh, 1347, down here too. This line represents June 1848. By the end of 1848, this is as far as the line of the plague. It had gotten into England by the, by the end of December. Now, this line represents, um, it's hard to read that one. I think it's June 18, um, 1849. And by December 1849, this line is represented, I guess, this direction right here, meaning the plague is going to spread this direction and move outward. So there's some questions there involving that. I'm, you'll be analyzing that more later on. Boccaccio, we read some Boccaccio yesterday uh, in our assignment the other day. So some of this stuff might be a bit, uh, you might be familiar with it. So this is about Giovanni Boccaccio. This is a, a, a firsthand account of what the plague looked like. The next one is an image. It's a picture, it's a drawing. Um, you can see all kinds of crazy things going on there. We'll, we'll look at that in more detail. You'll need to study that in more detail. And then we have the Florentine Chronicle, which is another document that addresses how people deal with the plague. Um, five and six are image. One's a nursery rhyme right here. Another one is an image from the a couple of images from the plague. And notice that they put questions in here too. So that's what we'll end up doing on Tuesdays, answering those questions to really analyze those documents. Um, seven is a, is a primary source. It's called the cremation of Jews in Strasbourg, Germany on St. Valentine's Day, February 1849. Document eight is how many people died from the plague. And document nine deals with the population of Europe and its growth and decline because of the plague. So those are the documents you'll be studying on Tuesday. <laughs> but for right now, let's look at the context. This document-based essay is based on documents one through nine. It's designed to test your ability to work with historical documents. Some of the documents have been edited. As you analyze the documents, take into account both the source of each document and any point of view that might be present in the document. And the questions will help you do that. Okay, um, historical context. The bubonic plague or Black Death came out of eastern Mediterranean um, along shipping routes reaching Italy in the spring of 1848. By the time the epidemic was abating or declining in in 1351, between 25 and 50 percent of Europe's population had died. The epidemic is believed to have started in China and made its way west across Asia to the Black Sea. One theory is it entered Europe when a group of Tartars or Mongols used catapults to hurl the dead bodies of inflect, infected soldiers over the wall of a Genoan trading outpost that was under siege. Because people had no defense against the disease and no understanding how it spread, it brought panic as well as illness and death. Lepers as well as Jews and other ethnic and religious minorities were accused of spreading the plague and thousands of people were executed. We now know that the disease was spread by infected fleas that were attaching themselves to rats and humans. 
The most striking symptom of the plague was a dark swelling or bubos, or the lump in the glands on the victim's neck, armpits, and groin. They range, range from the size of an egg to an apple. Once the swelling appeared, an infected person was usually dead within a week. Another, even more virulent form attacked the respiratory system and was spread by the breathing of exhaled air of a victim. Once a person was infected, their life expectancy was one or two days. One of the most striking descriptions of the plague is the introduction to the Decameron, the book that was written by Giovanni Boccaccio in Florence. It tells the story of seven men and three women who flee to a villa outside the city where they are able to, to survive. Okay, so now using the information from the documents and your knowledge of global history, you need to answer the questions following each document. And then when you uh, basically look at all these documents, the next point will be to look at the essay. Okay, so that's all we got right now. So you want, right now you take the quiz so you can demonstrate you understand what a document-based question is, how it operates, and then what the bubonic plague is about generally. And then tomorrow we'll open the documents and we'll do the, start doing the tasks of analyzing, preparing ourselves for the essay. Okay, that's about all I got to say about that.